Hey, this is the franchise, Shane Douglas. For the walking weapon, Josh Alexander, and you're watching. Oh, blue, 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 blue. And you're watching. Yamane, aka WWE. And here's this podcast with Ollie Harper, my man. <laughs> And you're watching the Ali Harper Show on YouTube. Hey, what is going on, everybody? It's me, Ollie, aka Tina Satitude, and I am back again here on YouTube.com for all things professional wrestling. Now, today, guys, I wanted to continue on with the hot topic videos. I really wanted to carry on with the professional wrestling discussion videos, and that is why I am back today to give my two cents on all elite wrestling in 2024. You know, AEW has been getting a bit of a bad rap in the last few months. Their viewership is down. Their live attendance is down. You know, people can defend them and say, well, the wrestling is good. But, you know, on the business side of things, things are down. And we're going to talk about it. Because I used to be a huge AEW fan. If you followed me on this channel from 2019, 2020, you'll know I was at one of the very first AEW shows. I went to Revolution 2020 and I've got the shirt. I'm just flipping it around so you guys can see. I was at that show. I was third row, Wintrust Arena, Chicago, Illinois. The main event, Chris Jericho defending the AEW World Championship against John Moxley. Right before the COVID-19 pandemic, right before... There was no more live shows for a long while and everything was shut down and everybody, there was no, it was empty arenas and it was just a really miserable time. But I was at that show and it was a great show because it's, it was a time and an era in AEW where things made sense. Less was more. You know, the rosters were not as overloaded and bloated as they are now. In those days, the rosters were smaller, the storylines made more sense, there was long-term build, there was an actual reason to care for the shows, you know? Everything felt fresh and it was the alternative because WWE weren't really doing very good business back then. You know, WWE's programming just wasn't really bringing it, I guess, you know? They, they were struggling. And it was at a time when, you know, people just wanted something new. They wanted an alternative from WWE. You know, we hadn't had an alternative on the scale of an AEW since WCW in 2001 when, before, you know, when it closed. But as a wrestling fan, AEW at the time was a huge appeal. And I wanted to go see it for myself, you know. I remember that. I only went for a four-day trip, but I was at that show. Chicago, Illinois, I went. It was a great show. But it was just at the time I felt I've got to I want to do something. I want to see a bit of what we'll probably look back at as his history. You know, one of the best matches on that show was, of course, the Young Bucks against Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page for the AEW tag time tag titles. Great match. MJF and Cody Rhodes on that show. Great again, you know, but, you know, and it, it said a lot about AEW because during 2020, you know, empty arenas, they would move to Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. And you know what? The shows were still fun. Okay, we didn't have the crowds. We didn't have the live crowds. We only had wrestlers around the ringside area, Sean Spears and MJF playing cards. But what we had was still something where they were thinking outside the box to make their product entertaining. You know, they were running the shows on a pretty small amount of people, but they were doing something that was still fun and engaging for you to want to tune into each and every week. And, you know, they were, they thrived. I feel AEW really thrived during COVID. You know, I wouldn't look back at the, those, those shows and go, they suck. I thought they were good. I thought they were fresh and, you know, they were consistent. You know, they did a really good job and the pay-per-views were solid as well. You know, Cody Rhodes and uh, Brody Lee, you know, remember they, re oh, sorry, yeah, 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 Cody Rhodes and Brody Lee would wrestle on the Dynamite, remember the dog collar match, of course, you know, the late, great Brody Lee, that was his last match, but the build for that was great. You know, they were doing some good, good business back then. I remember Winter is Coming, and I remember Kenny Omega, 
you know, stealing the AEW title from John Moxley. And then, you know, this was, I think, around the time when AEW and Impact were having a bit of a, a partnership. But, you know, everything was good. Dr. Britt Baker was getting showcased. And I remember she was having some great matches with the likes of Thunder Rosa. You know, so where's all, all this fun stuff and all this great, great stuff that I'm going on about? Where, what happened? Where did it go? And, and, you know, I feel like 2021 was solid, you know, because that was around a time when the fans started to come back. Cody Rhodes was still there. And things were just, you know, as they were. Punk even came in around that time. So, you know, things were just getting better and better and better for AEW. They were just growing. But now I feel like they're on the decline. And it's really unfortunate to say, you know, I feel like, you know, I watched Dynamite the other week and I put it on and, and I, I was really bored. I feel like the flow of their shows has really gone down this past year. Um, and it's really hard to get into their shows these days. It's like they're doing too many of these hot spots. They want hot shots and it's all about how many of these international talents we can showcase. Okay, granted, I know you've got Forbidden Door coming up, but still, it's like we're just doing too many of these dream matches on our weekly product. I like long-term storylines. I like things that have build to them. I like consistency. I like significance of a wrestling show that's booked properly with the right payoffs and the right amount of time for you to be patient and to enjoy it. You know? Cody Rhodes, when he was in AEW, I don't know, he was an EVP. So I do feel he had a part in the direction of the company. And I do believe that when Cody was there, that's when they were listening. And that's when they made sure that the shows had some consistency there. You know, the wins and the losses mattered is what used to be the thing. They used to have the scorecards. And things really mattered back then. You know, we were at a time where, of course, Jericho had the inner circle. There was the elite. Cody was doing his thing. And then obviously, you know, people would turn on Cody. But still, it was a fun time. AEW was fresh, it was new, it was alternative in those early years. Where we are now, though, is I feel like AEW has really dipped off. And I feel it's maybe since 2022. That's where I'm going to put this at. You know, when Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor, all of a sudden TK had expanded his workload. He had Ring of Honor... He had all this new talent now, the Ring of Honor talent. Obviously, he didn't get the deal on straight away for the TV deal. But all of a sudden, all these Ring of Honor guys started coming up on Dynamite. And they were defending the Ring of Honor belts on Dynamite. And there was too many belts, straight away. All of a sudden, too many belts. It was taking a shine off what they were doing with the main show, the main product. Uh, don't get me started on Rampage. Rampage is one of the most afterthought you know, shows that they have now. You know, They've got Collision, which occasionally is okay if you watch it um but i feel like where the problem is with tony khan is that it, the roster blow is a huge thing a huge thing you know the rosters are too bloated he signs everybody and he keeps signing people and he's not showcasing every single talent and this is where those good talents are either not doing anything, or they're leaving. Ethan Page, gone. Brian Pillman, gone. Brian Pillman Jr., gone. Um, you know, and, you know, Jay Cargill. She went to WWE. I, you know, gone. So, all of a sudden, we are, as fans, it's like, okay, the rosters for me are just too, like I say, they're too bloated. Where's Miro these days? He's not been on TV in years, it feels like. Where is Miro? The, you know, where's Miro? Where's Dr. Britt Baker DMD? Where's Jamie Hayder? You know, where's Rebel? I mean, I love that group. Where are they? Gone. You know, they, they're nowhere to be seen. He just They just disappear and you never see them again. I mean, it doesn't even really uncover where they are. They're just not there. And it's, it's just baffling. You know, I don't believe Britt Baker's actually been on TV since All In 2023. I believe that was the last time she wrestled. Um, I think one of the biggest problems that AEW also goes through is they like to throw shade at WWE and they do it. They've done it a lot in the past, but it doesn't help them. 
you know, not when they're not bringing it themselves. And when they start throwing shade at WWE, they just look so dumb doing it. You know, because WWE is actually putting on good business right now. Jacob Fatu just debuted on SmackDown. And <laughs> seriously, we've got this nice new debut. You know, the, you know, some people could argue and say, well, the Bloodline thing's too boring. It sucks now. Honestly, guys, I think the Bloodline storyline is just getting freaking started, it feels like. You know, the Jacob Fatu, you've got the Tongas, you've got Solo. Um, don't get me started. You know, I was talking about the Wyatt Six last week. But again, there's something there on every part of what they're doing. There's the shows, again, they feel fresh. I mean, think about this. The Cody Rhodes-Jacob Fatu match down the line is going to be something to watch. But going back to what I was saying about AEW, this is the problem, you see. They've got all those little Easter eggs that they're now filling in WWE that makes you want to tune in for the next few weeks, the next few months. You want to see where they're going, what they're going to do. I want to see this. Well, you know, when's Cody and Jacob going to wrestle? When's the Wyatt Six going to wrestle? When's Joe Hendry going to wrestle? There is consistency across the board. You want to see these things because they are, they're just doing it in a nice way. It's steady. It feels good. It feels fresh. But what all elite wrestling are doing, okay, well, you know, well, they're putting on great wrestling. Okay, but the great wrestling don't mean shit if it don't have a good storyline with it. It don't mean shit if it doesn't have the right kind of booking. If you're just going to throw it out there like a random exhibition match, I just don't care for it. You know, I remember when I was listening to Undertaker's podcast and he was talking about how he hates the overuse of the, uh, of the super kicks and pretty much throwing shade at the Young Bucks. But still... An old school guy, a Hall of Famer like The Undertaker comes along and, you know, even he's like, you know, those less is more, those you got to make sure that. I remember one, another interview Taker did once and he was saying like every, you know, thing you do in the ring has to have significance. It has to mean something for why you're doing it. But when you start doing, you know, 100, you know, 100 super kicks and doing all these crazy big moves, the fans don't care. They want the next thing. They want the next big thing. And unfortunately, I feel like AEW has really peaked out there. I feel like they've done all these big super matches. They've had these big super shows. They've done what they've done. But now where they are is they're at this point now where things are just plateauing, I guess. Peaking out. And it's not good, you know. I want to enjoy AEW. I really do, you know. But I just don't feel like they've got that same buzz they haven't got that same drive that they had in the early years, in the 2019s, in the 2020s. This is AEW. This is the, for me, this was golden AEW for me. And then all in 2023, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't feel like it was as good then. I went because it was Wembley and it was a huge deal and it was a show that as a wrestling fan you'd want to go to. But where they are now, I don't know. You've got Mercedes Monet over there. You know, you've got Edge doing stupid spots, breaking his leg. He ain't getting any younger. MJF's there, I guess. But now he's got to find, they've got to find somewhere for MJF back in the fold. You've got um, Will Ospreay, who I assume they're going to, he's going to be getting his run to the world championship at some point. You know, I watched Dynamite last week, and this is where I feel I probably wanted to make this video. And, and I remember I put it on, and I just was like, oh, man, this just, this is dragging. It just felt slow. And it was just match after match after match. No real promos. The storylines are just feeling extremely slow. Well, they're just not, that's the point. They just don't feel like there is storylines. It just feels like we are just throwing this just at it, you know? We just need to have these hot matches, one after the other. Um, but like I say, I think that unfortunately the shows do, it's like I say, there's too much of it now. And I think this is the problem. AEW, they've got way too much going on. It's too bloated. It's just, you know, let's please one set of fans, but they're not focusing on actually growing, actually developing and actually moving you know, evolving. You know, people can argue and say, well, well, they're doing all in again. Well, they're doing Wembley in this summer. Yeah, they are. But that will be their most good looking show of the year. I can tell you straight away, that will be their most good looking show of the year. The UK is an absolute hotbed for professional wrestling. We don't get enough of it. You know, what we do get of it 
we we embrace it, whether it's AEW. I mean, look at those TNA shows from like 12, 13 years ago when TNA would come to London. Those shows look great on TV because fans went to them. It didn't really matter about whether they, sh they were good. The, sh the fans went because, hell, you're going to go see Kurt Angle, you're going to go see Samoa Joe, you know, damn it, we're going to go. But and it's, it's starting to feel like that now, you know? People ain't going to these Wembley shows. Oh, I'll watch Dynamite every week. I'm going to be at Wembley. No, they're going because it's something to do. It's a day out, you know? It's wrestling on the doorstep, and, and that's what it is. Um, but like I say, my support has been there for AEW. I've been to two of their shows in the past. I've got figures. I've got T-shirts. I've got the merch. I've got the hoodies. I've spent my money. I've supported them in the past, but they're in a different place now and, and, and they're in a different direction to what they once were. They have moved away from being the alternative and now I just feel like they're just a very bloated, in a way, I guess, I, and I shouldn't really say it, but they, it's funny, but I feel like in a way they've almost become like what WWE used to be and that is just these bloated, you know, I remember WWE when before COVID, they had way too many people. And the shows were too bloated and all the matches were just thrown out there and nobody cared. And, and that's starting to feel like what AEW is. But, you know, it's unfortunately where we are, like I say. Can they get better? I think you've got to look back at the formula of what made them so damn good in the early years and work from there. But, you know. Anyway. That is today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. If you want to leave me your thoughts below this video on what you feel that is going wrong with AEW in 2024, I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, and let's have a chat. Let's have a discussion. But that is today's video. As I say, don't forget to comment, subscribe and like. And I will catch you down the road for another video. I'm out, guys.